Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. It is 4.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States in Rochester, New York. And this is just a quick update on my coping with coronavirus and mental illness at the same time in isolation. Um, I spent the past two days in the emergency psychiatric room. I was feeling really paranoid. I think it was Sunday afternoon, delusional, thinking people were following me, thinking my neighbors are talking about me, just the general stuff that comes with my paranoia, panic attacks, uh, feeling suicidal, not really feeling violent, but a danger to myself. So I went to the University of Rochester, Strong Memorial Hospital, psychiatric emergency room, also known as CPEP. Um, I was there for two days. They did admit me into the hospital and they intended to put me in a bed upstairs because usually you have to wait in a psychiatric emergency room. Even if you get admitted into the hospital, you don't get a bed until one's available. So I spent two days sleeping on a couch. They don't have beds available in the emergency department. You're either sleeping on a geriatric chair, a couch, or in a chair. There are no beds. Um, so if you're waiting for a bed because you've been officially admitted into the psychiatric hospital, that can take hours or days. And I was already there for two days waiting, and I got sick of waiting because it's yelling and screaming and swearing, strapping people down, people going crazy in the psychiatric emergency ward who didn't want to be there, constantly causing commotion and noise and confusion. And I had enough of that. I felt better, less paranoid, less depressed, less anxious, and feeling more anxious by being in that fucking psychiatric emergency department. Um, with patients constantly flipping out who didn't want to be there, who were brought there against their will by the police, which they can do under New York State mental hygiene law. If somebody's a danger to themselves or others, um, they can be brought to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation against their will. More often than not, after evaluation, they're released, even if they were brought there by force. Um, but I was officially admitted into the hospital, which means I would have had to wait for a bed. Well, I waited 48 hours, started to go stir crazy, and told the hospital that I wasn't suicidal or violent, and I just wanted to go home. However, I do think, aside from the fact that it's total chaos, I did get some sleep, which I wasn't getting. Um, I got some sleep in the psychiatric emergency department. I felt more stable, more rested despite all the noise and yelling and screaming and swearing. Um, I didn't have a cigarette for two days because you don't smoke in a hospital anywhere in the United States, I would imagine, not just New York State. Um, smoking doesn't have the allure that it used to have, where you were allowed to smoke basically anywhere you wanted to. When I was in the state hospital, Rochester Psychiatric Center in the 1980s, they gave you tobacco to roll your own cigarettes or they gave you cigarettes directly, um, and they also even handed out corn cob pipes. Uh, the state hospital was an imposing 15 story monstrosity that had over a thousand patients. That hospital has since been closed, and therefore, not enough beds available, psychiatric beds available for people who need them. Um, that's what I experienced in the emergency room over the weekend not enough beds available waiting until there is a bed overcrowding in the psychiatric emergency department. Um, I believe that if a person comes in for a psychiatric evaluation, the law requires that before they're released, they have to be evaluated by a psychiatrist like I was. Um, and I was evaluated and put into the hospital officially. But since I was feeling better, I decided to leave and they let me go. Um, sometimes I think the staff are relieved when they don't have to hospitalize somebody like me because it gives them one extra bed to have available if somebody else should need it. Um, so I'm generally not feeling as paranoid, not nearly as anxious, not nearly as isolated. The weather is nice outside. It's about 60 degrees in Rochester, New York right now. Just last week it was snowing in April a few days ago before I went into the hospital. Now the weather's starting to get warmer. I just took my bike out and I just got back. So I'm getting back into my routine, back into the swing of things. 
which is what I wanted. The emergency room was needed. I did make the right decision in going, and I'm glad that I got better enough that I didn't have to be admitted into the hospital and didn't need to wait. Because obviously the psychiatrist didn't think I needed to wait for a bed that I could be released to go home. Because one psychiatrist evaluated me, another psychiatrist evaluated me within 48 hours, and we both agreed that I could go home and that my admission into the hospital would be released. Um, so I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I went to the store today and I bought some surgical face masks at Walmart, $29 for 50 face masks in one package. That's pretty steep. I thought it would be a lot cheaper than that. I bought hand sanitizer online and also at Walgreens in person. And the prices were reasonable. But anywhere I went to go get face masks, the prices were high. You're talking like 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks for just 50 or so face masks. I think that's pretty steep. Um, but that's just me. So um, I'm doing better. Uh, Every time I go to the hospital, I want to point out that it's me who calls the ambulance and the police. The police usually show up. They didn't show up this time. I'm not sure why. The ambulance showed up. I told them I wanted to go to a psychiatric emergency room, and they didn't pat me down or nothing, and I just got into the ambulance and went. Normally, when it's a psychiatric emergency, the cops show up either before the ambulance or at the same time as the ambulance, and the ambulance won't deal with you until the police show up Check your pockets to make sure you're not carrying any weapons or sharp objects or dangerous objects. And then they put you in the, the ambulance and take you to the hospital. Um, they didn't do that this time. The police didn't show up at all. Probably because I told the 911 operator that I wasn't violent towards other people. And I was feeling suicidal but not aggressive. Um, and the 911 operator asked me if I had any weapons. I, of course, said, no, I don't have any weapons. Um, I don't have access to firearms. I don't have access to any kind of weapons at all. So every time I go to the hospital, it's me who calls the ambulance and the police. It's me who calls 911. And I always go voluntarily to the hospital because I'm the one making the request. Um, I've never had anybody call the police on me for a psychiatric emergency where I had to be forcibly taken to the hospital. That has never happened. Not from the first time I went into a psychiatric hospital at the age of 18. Every time then and since, I am the one who calls the police and the ambulance on myself. Um, and I know the routine. So um, one of the things you don't wanna do if the police are involved is when they pull up in their car, don't have your hands in your pocket don't do anything that's threatening. Don't walk towards them. Let them walk towards you. Keep your hands out of your pockets. Let them pat you down. Um, don't get sn snap snippy with the police. Don't be abusive. Don't be obnoxious because that only increases the chance of violence of you getting thrown to the ground, thrown into very tight, uncomfortable haircut, handcuffs, and thrown in the back of a police car. Um, and they may not arrest you for criminal charges, but at that point, if you were being an idiot and showing potential violence, like having your hands in your pocket, um, the police don't know what you have in your pockets. So it's best to keep your hands out of your pockets until they check uh, what's in your pockets. I have never been bought, I have never been brought to a psychiatric emergency room in handcuffs. Um, I know how to act so the police don't feel suspicious or threatened and I cooperate with them fully when they want to check my pockets, when they want me to put my hands up so they can check me with a metal detector at the hospital. I go along with all of it. Um, so I'm doing okay. I'm doing better than I was just on Sunday. I can't tell you how horrible I felt on Sunday. I was pacing back and forth. I was hearing voices. I was vomiting, which I have medication to prevent. Um, and I was like really losing my mind. So my time in the psychiatric emergency room 
was necessary and beneficial. I just wish that they did have a bed available because I don't want to get sick again real fast because there was no bed for me this time around. Um, the same thing happened several months ago. We were going to do electroshock treatments. I was admitted into the hospital. I was waiting for a bed. And after two days of waiting in the psychiatric room, emergency room, I said, fuck the electro electroshock therapy. I'm feeling better. Let me get the hell out of here. So that's happened twice in the past 12 months. But anyways, comment, like, subscribe, share. Um, if you want to help me out, you don't have to send me money. Just share my videos on social media. Um, I don't put copyright claims on my videos. I use a uh, comment attribute, I think it's called, where anybody could use my videos in the way they want. Pieces of them, the whole video, it doesn't matter. I don't enforce any copyright laws on my own videos. I believe it's called Creative Commons Attribution um, when I'm not claiming any copyright privileges for my videos. Um, if you have any suggestions on a topic you want me to do, put it in the comment section. Make sure you hit the notification bell because even if you're subscribed, you may not know that I put out a new video unless you put the notifications bell on down on, I believe, this side of the screen from your perspective. Um, it's weird. It's like, I, I imagine that I'm looking at a mirror, but it's not. My hand is opposite of what I'm seeing on the screen. Um, but anyways, like, comment, share, subscribe, and everybody take care of themselves and each other.